August 12th, 1999, there was a bankruptcy, the third international bankruptcy of the United States of America. And there was a guy, a regular American, who was in position to capture the flag of the United States. His name is Russell J. Gould. And since then, he has been guiding people into coming out of the fraudulent birth certificate system. What happened was, in 1789, the Constitution was signed as a bankruptcy agreement with a $3 million loan from the Rothschild European bankers. So we had 70 years to pay this loan back. So 1789 to 1859, we couldn't pay it. So they rewrote it. You get three tries according to international banking laws. So 1929 was the next chance. The crash. We couldn't pay it. Roosevelt became president soon after that in the 30s. And we needed money to get out of the Great Depression. And he signed us as collateral. Our birth certificate. That's when people started getting them. There wasn't one before then, and not on any grand scale. Ever since, this fraud, the original copy, has been traded on the markets that we aren't allowed to trade on. The big bankers, the global bankers, they trade, and the values can be, depending on how much you've worked in your life, 600000 up to millions. That's the value you can claim if you're alive, legally. You're not, unless you have a claim. <clears throat> this is not anything that's been made up. This is the hidden how it is that isn't taught to anybody and it's the ruse. So it's kind of a shipping war. You're born of the water, your mother, you're docked by a doctor in a boat parked on the land called a hospital vessel in dry dock. And, and before your feet hit the ground, your feet are stamped on this birth certificate and your mother signs it. Try to leave a hospital without. Okay, so now you have seven years to claim your life or you're considered dead, lost at sea. So by the time you get a driver's license, your name is in all caps. Because that's the only place you're supposed to see that is on a tombstone. Because you're a dead legal corporation. I'm not talking about your physical body or your spirit or your soul. But in a way, they sort of have captured um, the essence of you and made you pay fines on this dead corporation that once you claim it back, that's it. Uh, so who are we talking about? Well, pff, you know, go to the Bible and figure that one out. But either way, legally, all legal things come from London. Yep. All religious big decisions are made in the Vatican. And the military force is D.C. So those three... You know, the enforcement, the religion, and the legal slash banking, those three, London, Vatican, D.C. So this guy, he captured the flag, <clears throat> and when he did that, he went to the United Nations. They, 200 countries voted him a sovereign. And because the U U.S. was in a, a bankruptcy, he claimed the U.S. and Canada, which have always been tied to the post office in Washington, D.C. He took a real flag that had the correct 1 to 1.9 ratio dimensions stated in U.S. Code Title IV, Sections 1, 2, and 3. A real flag, and he registered it with a, con a contract stating that he was claiming the land, and he had all his ducks in a row. He, was, he had been for several years getting ready for, and didn't really know how it would work, how, when it would come down. But in July of 99, he applied for the copyright on the Title IV American flag, and it was granted to him. He, he took that the next couple weeks, once he figured out what to do next. He took that to the Universal Postal Union in D.C. and registered that flag with them as Postmaster General. And because they were in a bankruptcy, he captured it. It's legal, according to U.S. Code, already existing. Uh, none of this was created. This was correctness to the code that exists. U.S. Code, 53 codes, I think. Uh, titles, 53 titles. Uh, so anyway, you know, basically, uh, once you get that position, 
um, you're not a dead person anymore. And, you know, in a courtroom, the judge wears black because he normally presides over birth certificate dead people. And children are kind of a, a tricky thing, but their lives can be claimed. And once their lives are claimed, uh, something like CPS can't be getting involved in it. Uh, they only deal with birth certificate children. So it's a, it's a ruse. It's a contract you didn't sign, and any contract that terms weren't stated before you signed it isn't valid. So you just claim your life back, and you beat the game because so few do. So it's it's pretty easy how that it's very subtle, uh, but things were set up this way by somebody, uh, and those somebody seem to be in Europe and D.C., but Europe, Brussels, London, D.C. Um, so let's say, you know, you think you own your property when you pay your loan off, but if say you have a piece of land that the government wants, they'll find drugs or something or a lab or something on your property. They'll take it from you unless you really own it. And you know, you really own it when you don't pay property taxes because that's rent to the real owners because the constitution simply says all land has to be bought with gold and silver. If it's not you didn't actually buy it. it. The debt is still there. Even though it's been settled and contracting the terms and, you know, legally you can kick people off of it and all that. But if it comes down to it, you don't really own it anymore until you file a simple claim. Uh, but, you know, to do that, you have to be a claimant. You have to, and that doesn't, you don't need anybody to do that, but you have to know how. And to make it easier, you can go to the, for the Claim of the Life website, pay 150 bucks and get instructions. So the instructions is what the money's about. You know, uh, it it's hard to do, uh, but not impossible. But with the instructions, you you it's a series of mailings, certified mailings, uh, registered mailings, different things like that. It takes about two or three months to just complete the process. No no big deal. And then you start getting instructions on what to do next. Once you've claimed it, you know, you can start to position yourself so that things like when you get pulled over, you know, you tell the cop, hey, I don't answer questions that you have no authority, but I respect your, uh, you know, serve and protect. I pre we respect that, right? You know, you're respectful, but you say, sir, you know, I don't contract with the courts and you don't have authority because it all ended. Do you have a claim with Russell J. Gould? Uh, do you know about last flag standing? And a lot of them really do. You wouldn't believe how many of them do. Uh, so, you know, your sheriff is ultimately the, the guy that you want to deal with. Um, when you get pulled over with a, and you have a claim, you don't show no license. No, that's fake. You know, you can show your registration. They can get some information off that. But you don't have to, and they know you don't. Doesn't mean you could, uh, you know, road rage and, you know, you know public safety, you, you, you got to lay low. But when uh, once you claim your your <clears throat> your license through the DPS, when they pull your license up, they see that you're not just anybody that's been that's part of their system. That's right. So a lot of people are in on it. Not everybody, but a lot of people are in the know, and it's easy to it just easily stays hid. It's it's trickery. It's lies. And who's the father of lies, right? So, yeah, a lot of this world is, uh, they've aligned themselves with something else. Um, so, check it out. Uh, you, you can check out, you know the links on my web, on my page. Uh, you can find them if, it, if it's something you care about. Um, but once you put yourself in position, uh, you have the authority to use his new contract language, which is termed quantum grammar, but it's a mathematically correct sentence structure and it has no, it basically is valid both directions on the timeline to infinity before, past and future. Uh, it's written in a way, um, very simply, not a new language, but it's correct sentence structure using prepositional phrases to set up your facts. Um, we use facts, not nouns. Uh, facts. So, for the claim of the life. Prepositional phrases to set up facts.
Uh, also, you can learn to disqualify any government document because they're written in a, a fraudulent way. Once Russell Gould claimed the U.S. and the flag, he set new terms for contract, and it's very simple. You cannot use pronouns, adjectives, and adverbs in any legal document, contract, anything important, you can't do it. If you do it, it makes it uh, basically disqualified, and there's a code, zero through nine, that you just basically learn. Uh, you can join a class, and you can learn how to syntax and how to write in quantum grammar, how to contract, and really take control of corporation you. Um, highest authority, because you're you're on the level of a postmaster, basically, of anything that's about you. You place stamps on things that you have to do, like licenses, passports. You stamp them and you sign the stamp as postmaster, and you're the highest authority over your vessel, all your cargo, which, by the way, your thinking is a cargo, you know, just like a piece of paper is a vessel, the words are the cargo. Court is about paperwork and words. The court is not the building. It is how you document. Dock, shipping war, remember? You dock the paperwork as a docket, um, just like a dock door delivered you, a registered harbor master with the port authorities. So everything's set up in a subtle way as a shipping, and if you know the key to it, you can navigate your vessel and keep it from going in their clearing houses that are called jails. No one can po can uh, book you if you don't let them. But you can't eat their food, and you can't wear their clothes. So pro tip, wear white underwear and t-shirt at all times if you're going to be a criminal, because at least you can keep it if it has no color on it. Should you find yourself naked and hungry, but eventually they have to let you go. I ain't saying don't go murdering somebody, but if they capture you for whatever reason... And you don't book. There's no record you were ever there. And eventually they have to let you go. Uh, and that's that. Uh, they can't really hold you. But, you know, if you really hurt somebody, you harm someone, they just will hurt you back. Or cause you to not exist. I mean, once they've got you captured and you did something, they can prove it. But if, you're, uh, if you got the knowledge, then you just don't get navigated into those kind of situations. Uh, because beforehand you had the knowledge not to answer questions of any kind. You respectfully make statements uh, because uh, you're not a dead entity. Well, <clears throat> these are things you can do. You can try it right now. And if you, if you speak to a cop with knowledge and he knows that you have knowledge, and then you uh, can show a couple things like you've signed, you know, he pulls up your license and it's already registered with the DPS, that you're a postmaster, and they know that they're not highest authority over that because there's a, a thing that I remember in school, but it, I learned it, that if, a, uh, if you're at a four-way stop and a mail truck, an ambulance, a fire truck, and a police car all stop at a four-way at the same time, who has the right-of-way? The mail truck. Because he might be de carrying a declaration of war. That's the way it was laid down. The second is going to be the fire truck because he's in contract with the sheriff's department. They're over the county. Next after that is going to be the cop. He's in contract with the municipality if you're in a city. And then lastly is the ambulance because he's, a, he's in contract with the municipality. He's the lowest on the totem pole. So uh, it's set up this way. And you know when you get old 18, you register at the military post office. It's a military post. All shipping with war, moving soldiers, postal roads, shipping lanes, everything's postal. So it's just a way to position yourself and to have the knowledge, have the documents, to be able to present your claim. And if you get called into court and they actually pull you in there, uh, they're going to wish they hadn't. If you have knowledge, if you've done your homework and you have your position um, and you're right. You have to be correct. This ain't about being a criminal. If you're a criminal, go away. But if you uh, generally do things that best you can, um, there's a lot of benefits that that is not being taught. So do what you got to do. Um, 
think about it. it might take you a long time to even consider it because <clears throat> right now nobody's starving nobody's uh nobody's being beat on uh you know no one's conquering anybody anything like that but we are living under a fake um expired um system where just like when Rome was captured the barbarians came in and they just started playing Rome they didn't change anything they were just the bosses and that's what happened some new bosses stepped in and they're running the machine and you think these congressmen are great people and when someone has a scandal oh no they did something wrong yeah anyway um it's time to position yourself so that you can't be pushed around. No one can ever inject anything into your vessel. Nobody. Um, and if they do, if you have a claim with the Commander-in-Chief, Postmaster General of the planet, the world, whatever you want to call it, uh, you have a position and you're just, you're a citizen, uh, a living citizen of a new construct that has the authority worldwide, not just America. There's a lot to this story. Um, there's a whole lot to it, and I don't want to say it all because it sounds too fantastic. But at the same time, where is he? This is 25 years later uh, that this guy is not, you know, when, you, when you're the enemy of who's running things, you don't get put on TV. No, they, yeah. So uh, with the Internet, though, more people are finding out about some things. Um, it's not all powerful. You know, if you mess around, the police will, they'll, they'll capture you, they'll hurt you. Um, it, it, you know, you have to lay low. And if you're a correct person, uh, you don't have those kind of troubles anyway. Uh, but, you know, when something happens that uh, <clears throat> ever, and you're literally on top of the world can, and you can't be pulled into any situation and tried in a court because you're a fact. And your contract is, uh, your claim of the life contract is what proves that you are a fact in the now space, in the now time, right now, not the past or the present, the way they, tri the trickery of legal documents, but you're, you're a living soul right now, a true man or woman, not a person. Person is a corporation. You're a man or you're a woman and you present that and no man or woman which are facts, they are a fact. You are a fact, but you have to claim it, and you have to have the document. Uh, but no fact or law can be tried in court. Look it up. No law or fact can be tried in a court. You're a fact. You can't be tried. It just can't happen. Uh, and they don't want you in there if they know who you are. Uh, if you don't claim anything, you just get, you know, you don't present your... Uh, Amicus curiae to the Secretary of State, you know, you don't present yourself to the state as a claimant and they don't know who you are, you can really get them because you walk in there and they know what this is. This has been around for a long time and it is real. And if you can outdo them, they respect that. They know what true is, but if they can trick and trap you, you'll never know it. They know you'll never know it. You don't have any knowledge. Um, they just harvest you. Uh, that's about it.